Welcome again to Wine Tasting with Giants. I'm your host, J. Todd Gunter, owner of GNS Wines. And we have a great guest today, Gwen Rahal of Rahal Wines. Thank you. Um, before we get into the wines, because you know we're going to do a little tasting, that's what we love to do here, I want to make sure I ask him a couple questions. I'm curious to know, as I, I want to know how you got into wine. Like, what was the reason why you felt like you had this calling to make wine? Girls. Girls. <laughs> <laughs> No, seriously, uh, my hometown uh, of Northeast Pennsylvania, it is one of the largest wine regions uh, in that part of Pennsylvania, upstate New York. And uh, our hometown is based, uh, Welch's is based there, Smucker's is based there. Um, as far as the eye can see, it's Lake Erie and grapes. Interesting. Miles and miles and miles. That area does not produce the best wine in the world. Uh, yeah, they're, I've had, more, I've had some, uh, some they're more from grape there. juice and, and, and table grapes and, and things like that, jams and jellies. Knock on wood, hopefully they can raise that stature down Well, oh, they have, they have. Uh, across the border in Canada, they're doing amazing ice things. Ice wines, yeah, I've been hearing. Well, yeah. we actually were able to make ice wines uh, in our place because the, the freeze would come in every winter. So they would leave a couple rows, um, and this is when uh, ice wine was a true ice wine. Yeah. Now they put it in vats and they keep it in refrigerators and freezers. Uh, here they would pick um, all but a few rows okay. and uh, let the storm come in. Okay. And there'd be rows of grapes just covered with snow and frozen. Crazy. True ice. Crazy. So you is that one of, is that something that goes into the way you make wine? Like, do you like ice wine enough to? maybe down the road, if not already, make some of your own? Yes, absolutely. Definitely? Okay. I love the process. Interesting. So when you came out here, did you just automatically start making wine? or were No, you... I came out here like everybody else did for computers. Interesting. I wanted to learn technology, and I got, my first job was with IBM. Okay. San Jose, right? Yes. Interesting. When you came out here for tech, was it one of those things where you just stopped wanting to do tech all of a sudden and start making wine? or? Did you, did you go through the whole thing that everybody else went through out here in Silicon Valley where the tech industry pretty much crashed and you had nothing else to do? No, it didn't crash. When I got here in um, 98, it was, it was just taken off. I mean, okay. it, it was rock and rolling all the way through 2005. Um, it just wasn't that exciting to be stuck in a room wearing uh, <laughs> masks and uh, doing computer analysis. I like to be outside getting my hands dirty. I get you. So, was there a specific bottle that did it for you? Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Franc, interesting. Yes, the grandfather of all wines. Yes, it is. I mean, it's it's the merriment of Sauvignon Blanc in itself to make Cabernet Sauvignon, which a lot of people don't know that. No, a lot of people they, don't they know that. They think Cab Franc is kind of under under the Cabernet Sauvignon, but the truth is, they had a beautiful baby of Cabernet Sauvignon once they blended together, once they decided to mesh together. So. As it is in music, um, Years ago, people used to ask me, oh, or, do you like country, do you like rock and roll, do you like classical? Uh -huh. And to me, I believe classical, if you listen to enough of it, has everything in it. It has... Everything it, comes from it. It has all forms of it. It has country, it has rock and roll. It's such a blend of everything once you, you, you delve into it. And Cabernet Franc, to me, is that. It, it has the, the softnesses and it can have the tannins of things. So you have the Merlot, which is a nice, uh, juicier, um, sweeter, and then you have Cab, which has the tannins and heavy bowl. It's right in the middle, and that's what I like about it. So let's get to the wine. It uh, looks like we're, we're going to be tasting on the Rahal Wines Meritage 2007. And I believe, of course, you know, with Meritage, it's, it's Bordeaux blend, so it has the Bordeaux grapes, such as like Cabernet Sauvignon, Cap Franc, which is one of the favorites, and also some Merlot. Um, so let's get into it. Um, I'm gonna take the glasses off so I can really get my nose in here. Yeah, what's nice about a Meritage, and you could probably speak more to this, mm -hmm. um, everybody is familiar with what they call blends. Yeah. Table wines, which used to be the before blends, and uh -huh. everything is blends. Um, this is what you call the prince or princess of, um, of blends. Yeah. It has to be a specific license, it has to have a certain criteria. Or you it, even put Meritage on the label. Correct. Yeah. So it's a much higher level of, of what you call a blend. Yeah, I mean, I, there's there's times where you go in California, pa Paso Robles, or, you know, Nap or even Sonoma, where they have, you know, some of those Bordeaux blends on the label, but they can't specifically put Meritage unless you have the right type of Correct, right, percentages and stuff. Percentage. Yeah, so most of this is Cabernet. Yeah. Very, sim very similar to uh, how Bordeaux does it, where you can't call certain things in that area, or even Burgundy. Certain, certain grapes are only allowed to be printed in Burgundy, and if it's over by 1%, you, you have to put a different label on it. Even though it comes from that region, it's not considered a very Burgundian true. or a Bordeaux. So, uh, cheers, my friend. Cheers. And then.
this is uh, sourced out of Sonoma, mm -hmm. um, Carneros regions, which is to me one of the best regions in the world. No disrespect to Napa, but uh, they, they're equal. You know, Napa and Sonoma in, in the Carneros region, I believe, are some of the best station wines around. Yeah, I love Carneros. Oh, this is good, man. Long finish doesn't fall fall apart. Again, balance is your key. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And good this alcohol. This is a very balanced product. Good alcohol that doesn't spike too much on the finish, which I love. Great mid palate. Like you can the transition flavors from the from the initial attack all the way to the finish is it's it's very good. It has um, definitely that wild cherry translates to the palate. Got some dark cherry going on in here too. Mm, correct. And a little plumminess, which is interesting. I like the I like the little plum skin thing that you have going on too. Round tannins. And what's nice about um, a good balanced wine in anybody's uh, portfolio is it changes. Mm -hmm. You know, day to day, year to year, but also it changes um, from the time of year. You notice this one here is on the cool side. Yeah. And it's cool outside. Yeah. Um, and then this one here um, has a little bit different flavor even in the summer. You know, it's lighter than than you'd think it would be. I, I love it. I really love this wine. It's um, it can be. I'm gonna let you know. You can drink this by itself. Or you can pair it. I drink like, a lot of it by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like yearning to have some kind of pork dish with this for some reason. Like I want something, a heavy pork dish with this, with a little bit of uh, edges burnt just to kind of, for this to cut right through. Because it has some good acid too. You can tell my mouth is watering. That's how much acid it has in this wine. I'm Very well nice balanced. blue cheese. Oh, that would be great. With this. That's right here. I yeah, love now they give it to you where they have the blue cheese and then the nice nice cracker or bread. They drop that honey on top mm -hmm. of it. Oh, I that, love it. That wow pizzazz. This here is a nice little chaser on that. But I agree, barbecue would also be good. You yep. throw some stuff on the ribs on the grill. All right, so this is your time to kind of put yourself out there. Where can we find this wine? How can what website can we go to purchase it? Um, how much do you have of it left? Because I think after this, a lot of people are going to want to buy it. Um, it's an amazing wine. It is a very fun, flavorful, balanced wine. This is a small batch. Uh, we probably made about uh, 2,000 cases of this product right here. Website is um, R A H A L Wines, W I N E S, RayHallWines.com. Also, we're launching together. Yes. We're launching a new site called A to Z Online Wines. Look forward to that. It should be uh, within the next month or so. And uh, that's going to give you everything from A to Z. We're going to do uh, vlogging, uh, tasting, uh, wine making, barrel tasting, bottling, you name it. A to Z will be the place to be. And I'll just be the talking head. <laughs> it was a pleasure interviewing you, and cheers, cheers man. Salute. We'll have to finish this bottle now. Oh, definitely.